Before we look into the concepts of AI and Gen AI, I gotta admit something. Over the last three decades, we have built up fairly complex communication systems with layers of complexity over complexity with every generation coming over each other. And with the infusion of cloud adoption and specifically this 5G first wave adoptions, we don't see the complexity to go away. We are also seeing enormous amount of data that's coming out of various subsystems of the networks that needs to be harnessed. So when we are talking about simplifying these networks, harnessing all that data that lives out around in the network, we started to a, believing in a concept in Nokia where we think the network needs a paradigm of sense, think, and act. Sensing from observability, especially when you're born in cloud this time around, you gotta have right the ingestion points across access, networks, and operations aspects. The think aspect, that will be brought in by AI and generative AI models, where you apply all these data to these algorithmic signs and get the thinking part of the network right, and act, and that's where autonomous operations comes very critical, where you have this 360 degree loop to bring back that thinking part back into the network in a feedback loop fashion. So for us, um, this autonomous operations and the use of AI and Gen AI tool becomes very, very critical for the simplification journey of these future networks. You know, the way we see it in Nokia, it's a two level journey. One is with the conception of cloud and cloud native architectures, uh, there is an obvious way of scaling in, scaling out, dynamism, agility that needs to be brought in with just by the nature of cloud native architectures, uh, we are still early on onto that journey. So that's to me is the bottom up automation. How do we do lifecycle management better? How do we do continuous integration into these cloud systems better? That still we need to progress in the next 12, 18 months. And then the bigger question for us is how do we make these networks more relevant to enterprises and industries? That elusive concept of monetizing these networks. And that's where I, we believe that automation and autonomous operations top down, where you take the business intent of these verticals and translate these business intent into service intent and eventually to the application of this multi-domain, multi-vendor network is going to be critical. So you see these two dimensions of automations are coming into play. And when you bring in these two automation dimensions, you see enormous amount of data service data, business data, network operations data, cloud infrastructure data, and that's where generative AI and AI play a sizable role. Let's talk about traditional AI, which is more a predictable model, time series. We're talking about algorithmic in models. We start up with the data science, take the data, raw data, curated data, all these ingestion points from the networks, and we build a data science practice. That's critical to us. And then we apply it to these models, train and retrain them, and possibly take out some predictable outcomes. So that's the traditional AI model. What's happening with large language models and more specifically transformational models, whether they are working on language aspects of it or in the scenarios of graphic with computer visions, what we are seeing is they are becoming more and more relevant to the simplification journey of the network. Why I say that? Uh, what we need to do with networks, we need to make networks more conversational in nature. What I mean by conversational is, take that business intent and how do you translate that simple business intent to a very complex network implementation. And that's how conversational aspects needs to be built in using large language models and generative AI frameworks to this simplification journey of the networks of the future. And that's where we believe that these two models will work synergistically, all both founded in the principle.